taken to implement the code for the UVME scoreboard are going to be shown on this slide. So the first thing we need to do is import the scoreboard package and we do that by using this import statement there. In your tool the Specman path is set already to the location where that file is located. We then define our own scoreboard unit which Mike inherits from the unit called UVM underscore scoreboard. We then define add and match ports and the type of items which are going to be passed to those ports. So in general the scoreboard ports will reflect the DUT's interfaces so in, normally we would add one port to the scoreboard for each DUT input and have one match port for each DUT output but circumstances may dictate that we do things differently in some cases. So ports don't cost you anything so if your DUT has an in-out port or bi-directional port then we can attach it to two scoreboard ports. Once we've defined our scoreboard unit which we've like inherited from UVM scoreboard we can then instantiate our user-defined unit and connect the ports to the relevant interface UVC monitors ports. So as a reminder the kinds of ports we use are interface ports of type TLM analysis, transactional, transaction level modeling ports. So here we actually see the code which implements what we discussed on the previous slide. The first thing we do is import the UVME scoreboard package as shown with that import statement. We then like inherit our own units from UVM scoreboard so the name of our new unit we're going to create is this name here packet to packet scoreboard. We use a macro so a macro in the e-language if you're not aware of them is a intelligent code generator so what it will do it will take a text pattern and it will replace it with a, an amount of code which gets generated automatically. So here the scoreboard macro is the text scbd underscore port followed by some extra code we type in that will get replaced ultimately with a whole bunch of generated code but as a user of this it's very simple for us we just need to know all we need to say is scbd port and then give a name for our port. So what this will do for us this macro is create a add port to our scoreboard database. We also define a match port as well so notice the type of them is add or match after the colon so here we can see we have add there and match just there. So the kind of information we're adding or matching is the same in, in our case because this is for our lab exercise where the data type going in to the design is the same as the data type coming out of the design. We then in make an instantiation of our scoreboard, so here we make an instantiation of that unit we've just defined and then instance name is scbd in that case. And then we use a connect method in order to connect the ports of the scoreboard unit we've just defined to the relevant port inside of an interface UVC monitor. So in this case sys.uvca dot tx dot mon dot got underscore pkt is the name of the TLM port we defined in our interface UVC. TLM ports have a predefined method called connect so inside of that what we do is put an instance name to where we wish to connect to. So scb dot packet add is the name of the port we wish to connect to. So notice where we're defining this connect ports method extension it's inside an extension of a unit called router monitor u. So this is the place where we instance our scoreboard so all of the names we give in that connect ports method are relative names of hierarchical paths from where we are which is inside of the router monitor unit. Questions will arise if the generic default behavior is not what we require and that is probably the case in, in most projects we will run. So for example what if not all data needs to have a match? What if we have only a small subset of physical fields that require matching, not all of them? What happens if our design does not have first in first out ordering? And what happens if the design transforms the data in some way? 
So the EVM scoreboarding package has features for allowing a user to go and redefine these important aspects of a scoreboard. So what we can do is go and modify the behavior of an ad port by extending a method called whatever we name the ad port underscore predict. We can also have a definition of how the match port behaves by redefining the method called whatever we name the match port underscore reconstruct. We can also change the matching algorithm to either our own custom version or one of the predefined versions that we have already built into the scoreboard. There also may be examples where we require that the data actually comes out on the correct port. In our lab exercise would be such an example. In our lab exercise we require that the data comes out on a certain port. So if we send a packet to address 0 we want to see that data coming out of port 0 and not any other port. We also might have different out of ordering policies so we need to take account of those also. So the documentation details all of the different kinds of scenarios that we can define using the UVME scoreboard package. The code example we saw previously is literally all the code required if we want to do first in first out ordering where the design does not transform the data in any way. So no other code would be required at all. If we want to change the behavior at add and match ports however what we have to do is, is only extend the predefining scoreboard methods predict and reconstruct which we saw on the previous slide. So it's important to is only extend and not is first or is also because that would mean we have existing functionality that we didn't define already in there and it will probably mean that what occurs is not what we intended. So is only extension is important to use. So what we're doing firstly here is we're we're defining in the packet underscore add underscore predict method. We're making a copy of an item that we've passed and it's important to make a copy because if we go and modify that parameter directly then we're affecting wherever it got passed from as well. So we make a copy using the dot copy method shown just here and we're assigning it to that local variable called predicted packet and then what we do is we go and assign to one of the fields in that uh, SBT packet S struct called predicted packet, we modify one of the fields to be something different than it would otherwise have been. We then go and call the add to scoreboard method. So it's essential, it's required, that if we go and modify the predict method, we go and explicitly call add to scoreboard with the struct we wish to add to the scoreboard database. So for the reconstruct method, we is only extend also for the same reasons as the previous explanation and in this case what we're doing is we're making a copy of the item and again it's essential to make a copy so we don't affect the parameter that actually got passed to this method so the the parameter of this method is called item that's why we say item dot copy so we assign that to a local variable for the method called match underscore pkt and what we're doing then is we're using a construct we haven't seen before so it's called check that so we explain it in more detail later, but essentially what it does is checks a Boolean expression is true at the point in time we execute that line of procedural code. And if it is not true, we have a DUT error. So what this is doing, you can gather from the names and the error message what is happening here is that if the address of the struct that gets passed is not zero, then we're raising an error because as you can gather from the name packet underscore match zero indicates that this is port zero. Similar to the predict method that if we go and extend the reconstruct method we must go and explicitly call the match in scoreboard method shown down here. The previous example we saw assumed there was only one match port and one add port and that's the default behavior. However, in situations where you have a different number and our lab exercise would be such an example, then you have to state uh, different things. So in our lab exercise, it's important that when we send a packet into the design, it comes out on the correct ports. So how do we express that?
So here might be a way in which we will go and define our user-defined scoreboard. So, so defining these kinds of things like how many match ports is, is part of the user interface for the UVME scoreboard package. So we define a single add port because our design only has one add port. And we define three output ports uh, which are connected to three match ports in the scoreboard. So the design has the three output ports. They are connected to the relevant match ports inside of the scoreboard. So again, we've used the scoreboard macro, the scoreboard port macro, in all these different places to go and add those ports and add all of the required methods and fields, etc. So what we're doing here, in we're extending our user-defined scoreboard unit, which we've like inherited from UVME scoreboard, and what we're then doing is a check because what we're trying to do as a main objective of this slide is to show how do we match the specific item to a specific port and there are various ways in which we could do this this is one example so what we're doing is we're going modifying the match the sorry that we're modifying the add port and we're modifying the underscore predict port here Okay. So remember, pkt underscore add was the name we gave to the port when we defined it with the scbd port macro. So what we're doing here is we're making a copy of item, which is the parameter that got passed to this predict method. Okay. We're assigning that to a local field with a copy. We're calling the add to scoreboard method with that specific struct. We're not modifying it in any way in this example. And what we're then doing, however, is we're using this method called setMatchPort a number of times here. So that's this method here, setMatchPort. So what that will do is when we've added this particular one packet that's going into the scoreboard database, we're saying that packet we've just added to the scoreboard must be matched on a specific port. And we can tell which port it should be matched to by looking at the address field, the field whose name is ADDR. So predicted underscore p packet is the name of the local variable to which we assigned the item which is the parameter of this predict method. Okay. So if the address field, and we've made an assignment of the address field to a specific field name here called dest underscore ADDR to make things easier to understand on the slide. If that value is zero, then we call the set match port with the predicted packet and pkt match zero. So pkt match zero is the name of one of the match ports, the port to which we want that input to be matched. So if we send a item into the design and add it to the scoreboard and its address is zero, we're saying the matching item for that must come from match port zero. And so on for all the other ones. If the address is one, we must see the item be matched to something coming from port one and so on for the others. Okay, So that's one way of implementing the requirements for our design in our lab exercises. The UVME scoreboard package provides a lot of built-in functionality. Functionality that you would otherwise have to create yourself project after project. Along with this comes an API where we can control all of the final level detail about what the scoreboard does or doesn't do. And you can find all of that that API described in the help documentation, but here's just an example of a typical scenario. So if we detect a reset in the DUT, you know, on most occasions we will probably want to clear the scoreboard. Not every occasion of course, but on this particular example that's what we're going to assume. So what we can do is tell the scoreboard that all of the expected items in the scoreboard are no longer expected now because the device has been reset. So what we want to say to the scoreboard is drop from your database the expected items. So how can we do this? So here's a method called reset my scoreboard and you notice the clocking event here is sys.ne. The scoreboard itself doesn't have any notion of time so that's what we use in order to advance execution is sys.ne. So what we're doing in this loop is we're iterating around and in this case we're assuming that this thing here, my SCBD, is a pointer to the scoreboard that we instanced. 
So remember with the scoreboard, we like inherit from the one in the EVM E package. We then instance that ourselves wherever we need it in the environment. So what we're doing here, these things highlighted in blue are the API methods of the scoreboard. So what we're doing is we're getting the top items from the, the scoreboard database. The number here, the parameter supplied is on def, meaning all items. So maybe we only want the top five items, for example. So we'd put the number five here instead. But in this case, we want all of them. So we say on def. What we then do is use this API method set item status. So remember, we're in a loop here. We're iterating around this loop. Uh, so what we're going to do is set the item status to dropped for every item in that list that got returned by get top items. So what this means now is we're dropping from the scoreboard all of those items.